Okay, so now let us just uh, quickly understand the idea that we have been using so far. We have been looking at the fact that work done by the electric field is Q times Va minus Vb that is potential drop from A to B. So if I take a charge and I move it from A to B, electric field does some work. But what is the actual electric force at this point? Suppose I had a charge Q, what is the electric force on this charge? Q times E, right? You already know the electric force. So this would be Q times E. Let us say the force was like that and you are going to have a displacement like this. This would be dS, right? So if I want to actually calculate work done by the electric field, that is basically force dot dS, correct? That would be the small amount of work in moving it from this point to that point. Now I want to move it from A to B. That means I have to integrate it from A to B, right? So if I integrate this from A to B, this is nothing but the work. Now what is this? Q times E dot dS. Now Q is not a vector. So actually the dot is only going to be for E. And I can pull the Q out because it's constant. So F is QE. Now this is, remember this is electric force. It is not the external force. F electric. That is Q times E dot dS from A to B. That is the initial point to the final point is Q times VA minus VB. Which means I can get rid of Q. So if I get rid of the Q, so let's just remove this Q out here. You have integral of E dot dS from A to B is the potential drop from A to B. So let us keep that in mind. VAB or potential drop from A to B. Now A is the initial, B is the final. So you are going from A to B, the potential drop, not a potential rise, not potential change. Okay, Potential drop VA minus VB. So I will also again specify that Va minus Vb. Now this potential drop is the integral of E dot dl or E dot ds. So I am going to use ds to tell you that it is displacement. Sometimes people use l to say it is the length. Of obviously displacement is also measure of that length. right? So integral E dot ds from A to B. So your path is from A to B and you integrate it you are going to get the potential drop. Now this tells you how to calculate potential drop in terms of E. right? Now if I decide I want to do this from A to infinity, what happens? You put B as infinity. But what is the potential at infinity? 0. So if I basically say Vb is 0 because B is infinity, then I can write Va potential at A. That is the initial definition. I can write that as A to infinity E dot dS. So this is the work done per unit charge because this force per unit charge. So work done per unit charge in taking it from A to infinity. You already know this because potential at A, if I go to infinity, the work done for a unit charge taking it from A to infinity by the electric forces, electric fields work. That is the potential at A. So Va is work by the electric forces in taking 1 coulomb from A to infinity. You know this as the definition of potential. right? So let us look at this. This tells us the definition of potential A to infinity. This tells us the definition of potential drop from A to B. They are both actually the same in one way because you can just look at A minus B, then you will get A to infinity minus B to infinity which is A to infinity plus infinity to B which is A to B. Okay, it is a long winded route. So I hope this is clear. What is this telling us? This is telling us that if I know the electric field, I can find the potential. Now we have been so far doing potential for point charges, but this allows us to do it for other kinds of fields. For example, if I had an electric field which was uniform, this allows us to calculate potential drops 
for such an electric field. There is a problem because if I took such an electric field, uniform electric field and I did this from here to infinity, this integral will become infinity. So I cannot find the potential here. I cannot find the potential there, but I can find the potential drop from A to B. In fact, it's very easy because integral of E dot DL or DS is going to be simply E into D because it's uniform. What is D? D will be the distance AB. Right? So it's easy to calculate potential drops using integral E dot DS without necessarily even recognizing that this is the same as KQ by R. That was true for point charges. This is true in general. So this becomes the good overall general definition for potential as well as potential drop. Now what are we doing here? We are calculating from E, we are calculating V. Now let us reverse this a little bit. You will see that the reverse is also very useful. So I am going to just clean up this place so we can reverse it. So let us look at this. I have V A, I am going to call it V R and I am going to write this as integral A instead of A what I have R, R to infinity E dot ds or in e dot dx it really doesn't matter okay now if i basically now be take this s out and i'm going to say i'm going to integrate it from 1.2 to infinity i'm going to just do dx here assume this all in a straight line okay so i start with a point charge and i'm going to say i'm here at r and i'm going to go to infinity now this basically means i'm going from r to infinity usually people like to write it as infinity to r which is not a big problem because you can write this as minus infinity to r e dot dx or e into dx. I should have put a dot but e assume in that direction in the radial direction. So if I now write this I can do a differentiation of this one but if I differentiate this with respect to r this is just the integral will just cancel out you will be left with e minus e. And on this side, you are going to have dv by dr. Now, this thing is an important relationship. All I am doing is to dis differentiate this. You know that if I differentiate a to uh, x, if I differentiate with respect to x, that means you can remove the integral and replace the function with respect to x. Okay. Here I have differentiated with respect to r, so this becomes e at r, e of r. Okay. It is not e into r, it is e of r. Now if I try to look at this and reverse it, this tells me E at R, I am going to use R now subscript, I could have done that there also. So this is E at R as a function of R is minus dV by dr. Where did this minus come from? It came from here. Why did it come there? Because it is R to infinity and when you differentiate it has minus of, well if you integrate from A to R. Then you differentiate, you will get this function. But if you integrate from R to infinity, or inf right, you have to do it from infinity to R. Only then you can do the, when you differentiate, you can basically get rid of the R and replace it by E of R. So this tells you that the electric field is minus dV by dr. Okay, so now if I know V, I can find the electric field. But this assumes that I know the potential as a function of R, only a function of R. It is not dependent, it is not changing. So that means the answer for the potential is the same whether it was here or there. If the R's were the same, potential must be the same. But what if this point, that point, that point, different points had different potentials. So then it would be a function of x, y and z. In that case this won't work. A more complicated version of this will work. So let us write that down. So it turns out, I am not going to prove it here that E as a vector is minus dV by dx. Now this is a partial derivative where you keep only x is changing. So you keep y and z constant. So dV by dx in the i cap direction. That is the amount it is changing, am amount V is changing in the i cap direction plus dou V. So we call this dou, dou V by dou y j cap direction this is basically the derivative differentiation right plus dou v by dou z and the k cap direction 
this is the electric field now we write this like this we call it gradient of v gradient of v just means that dou v by dou x i cap dou v by dou y j cap plus dou v by dou z k cap so this gives you this gives you what the components of the electric field e x is this e y is this e z is this so now think about it i could have written this like this i could have said e x is minus dou v by dou x that looks like that so e r is minus dv by dr but that works only if it was function of r but if it is not a function of r then it means e x is minus dv by dx dou v by dou x e y is minus dou v by dou y partial derivatives in the direction of x this is the reverse of this statement actually okay the minus tells the reason why you have instead of infinity to a you have a to infinity if i just reverse this you will get end up getting this equation so this is just the vector form these two are actually exactly the same statement one is the differential form and one is the integral form so from e you can find v and from v you can find e but which is easier to calculate v now if this was the only way to calculate v really it's not going to be very useful but you have a much better formula for calculating v which is just to do kq by r and just add up a lot of those kq by rs so if you do that you will be able to find v quite easily now i know v as a function of r or as a function of xyz then i can just simply take this to find out e now finding e remember was such a mess using vectors but once i know v from v to e is very simple it's just a differentiation so actually you will find that when we do this calculation e calculation is quite easy